Guten Abend. Our interest is to run C1M for a basin of our own choice. This is discussed in exercises 4 and 5. Our first task is to find the location of the outlet of our basin. I have C1M exercises in front of me. Let's go on to exercise 4. I'm interested in a file that has the word upstream in it, the map. I will open this with ArcMap. If you are more familiar with other options, this is of course possible. I push cancel. I will drag in the map we just discussed. I will add a base layer for context. Open street map. It will make the layer that we added somewhat transparent. Display 40%. And I will change the color so that darker values are represented with dark blue. Now what we are looking at is a map that shows the upstream area for each point. That is, a dark blue point here at the end of the Nile Basin has more upstream area, more area upstream of it, than a point, say, mid-basin. That is, more points discharge into this point at the end of the Nile Basin than into the middle of the basin. Let us say we are interested in the Nile Basin. What we want is to find the location, latitude and longitude, of the last point in the basin, or a point towards the end of the basin. We see this point. Let us find the latitude and longitude of it within the pixel. Great. As we move from top to bottom, we are finding latitude, presented in the bottom right of ArcMap. I can choose any value within this pixel. Let us say 31.7 falls into here, 31.7 latitude. As I go left to right, I find longitude. 31.2 longitude. This is how to find the location of the outlet of our basin, the example of the Nile Basin. If I want to find the location of the outlet of a smaller basin, or a basin that has less discharge, or less upstream area, I may have to change the scale of the colors so that they are more strongly represented, or lighter values are more strongly represented. Let's go to properties. Let's go to symbology. There are many ways to explore this, but one thing we can try is just adding many different classes. Classify with geometric interval. Okay. Let's change the color again to dark blue. Apply. Okay. All right. Now we can see more rivers or more points that, in comparison to the Nile, at relatively small upstream areas, we see them here more pronounced. For example, I now have the potential to get to the Krishna Basin. If I want the outlet of the Krishna Basin, I can go right here. The latitude and longitude we would try for the Krishna Basin, Let's see. As we go left to right, we are doing longitude. I could choose something like 80.8 for my longitude. And for my latitude, Something like 15.7. Let us look into the climate data. You may have just recently downloaded global climate data. I would suggest we put it within here. See what M underscore data. Climate. And into a folder called global. All folder structures, naming conventions are possible. And should you do something different, simply adapt what we do in this video to your needs. But should you want to copy as we do it in this video, simply put your data within global. I have four files in here. You may have many more. Let us now run C1M with a batch file or however you run C1M and a settings file we already know works. For example, this settings file works with this batch file. Great, I know that this runs. I will now adapt the settings file to run the Nile Basin with the global climate data we have just downloaded. 
Great. The settings file has many lines, and we must not go through all of them in detail, and you may not have to be familiar with most of them. I will go scroll through and talk about the lines that we need to be sure of and to update. For this example, I had four files inside of the climate data. We have pre-calculated reference evapotranspiration and over land and water for this example. So for this example, please hit calc underscore evaporation equals false. If you have many more climate data, then this may be true as you can calculate evapotranspiration with all the files necessary. But for this example, let us set it equal to false. The next line I'm interested in updating is path meteor. I have my data within, as I said, global. Perfect. I can change the output folder, but there's no need to. Let us keep it as it is. Let us now change mask map. Now you see there are already two lines for mask map, but when there is the pound sign or, or, dollar or number sign in front, it is not read. It is simply commented out. Let us comment out this line as well, the old way of making the mask map. What we want here is the longitude and latitude of the outlet of our basin. What did we decide? Longitude, 31.2. Latitude, 31.8. Longitude, then latitude. Perfect. Copy these numbers. And we're going to want to put these numbers also on the line gauges. Great. Now, there will be potentially different naming conventions. When I go into Meteo, I have the precipitation and the average temperature maps. Let us go back to our climate data. Now, I see that my precipitation starts off with a PR. PR, this is fine. Oh, well, this line is actually not red. Perfect. I want to not read the precipitation related to the Rhine. Let me comment this out and use this line. I want precipitation to go into this folder and look for the file that starts with PR. We do the same here. Then we notice here T average maps is going to look for a file that starts with T average star. In the data I have downloaded, T average temperature is actually referred to a TAS. I will change this to TAS. I must now just find the names of these two files inside. Same thing here. This is specific for the Rhine. We want to change it to be global or to read this global map. Comment this one out. Now, E underscore WRF daily. Our looks different. Ours looks like this. We'll simply copy this name in here and replace it here. Great. The same here. Comment out the line specific to the Rhine and uncomment out this one. All right. I have updated the name of the reference evapotranspiration map over land and water. I have made sure the naming conventions for precipitation and average temperature are fine. I have updated gauges and mask map to represent the Nile Basin. That's it. Now we'll see what happens when we run it. Exercise four, make sure to save this. All right, run with this. What are we missing? The precipitation maps. All right, precipitation maps I have downloaded. Let us check out the date for them. All right. Climate, global. All right, I'm going to open these with Panoply. Panoply is a a free software, um, really powerful to view net CDFs. Right, I'm going to open precipitation. All right, I see the first date is 2011, the first day of 2011. Look at the last one, 2192. I have data from 2011 to the last day of 2016. This is daily data. Okay, good. The error we got from C1M suggested that our dates didn't 
fall in the available data dates. So, perfect. We're going to look for these three, step start, spin up, and step end. For now, let us put step start, let's say the year 2012 is interesting. One slash one slash 2012. And let's say the last day of 2012. So we just do the whole year 2012. So make sure that we comment this one in and we comment this one out. I want to include, let's say, a two-year warm-up period. This is when the model will run but not produce outputs. It will be a warm-up of the model. So let me actually put this date here. Ah, and my data only goes from 2011. So let's just do a one-year warm-up. From 2011 to 2012, the model will warm up. Will not produce output. We will have output from 2012 for the whole year of 2012. All right. Let's save this. Let us go back to exercise four and run our batch file. Ah, fantastic. All right, let us go look at the output. We put it in output underscore Ryan because we didn't change the output folder. Discharge daily, I'll look at it with Panoply again. Discharge in cubic meters per second, double click, create. Pa, isn't that beautiful? This is showing discharge across the Nile Basin. Zoom in, zoom in, great. Let us uh, move through time. All right, so what we see is we have updated our Rhine settings file to read the global climate data and to run with the mask map of the Nile Basin. Um, great. Till next time.